Hey guys, welcome to this week's Storytime Sunday. Happy Easter edition. Even though we aren't doing an Easter book, it is still Easter. So um, I figured I would dress for the occasion and put on my best Easter jacket. <laughs> so we're running a little bit late technical difficulties. Uh, so we'll wait just a few minutes for those who want to join, to join. I do realize it's Easter dinner time for some, family time, so we probably won't have as many people as we normally do, but that's okay. I'm here for those who do join. Hi, Nick. I hope you had a good Easter as well. Welcome to all who are joining. Happy Easter. I wish I had thought far enough in advance and I would have had an Easter book, but I didn't think about it. <laughs> Completely forgot which day it was this month. So um, we won't be doing an Easter story, but we are, um, I'm dressed in my Easter attire. <laughs> I guess that's all you can ask for, right? We'll give it just a few more minutes. Uh, I did get a late start. We were having some technical difficulties um, getting the feed going, but we should be good now. Hi, Sylvia. Welcome. We'll give it just a few more minutes. I was gonna try and find bunny ears, but A, all I have are mouse ears, and I'm not sure that my Mickey Mouse ears are um, Easter-y enough. Oh, they're backwards. Are easter -y enough? I guess maybe. We'll pretend that they go up higher. You can't really see them anyhow, so we'll pretend, we'll pretend that those are Easter bunny ears. They're Easter Mickey ears, mini ears. We'll pretend. <laughs> All right, friends, we are going to go ahead and get started. Again, welcome to Storytime Sunday. Tonight's book is How This Book Was Made by Mac Barnett and photos by Adam Rex. Um, as you guys who have joined me before know, and if you're just joining me, here's a little tidbit. I always take the covers off the books when I read just because I don't want to mess up the covers. Usually when I take the book off the cover, the book inside has the same artwork as the cover. In this particular instance, it does not. So I wanted to show you this is the actual book cover with the adorable artwork by Adam Rex. And on the back, it shows this book was here. Do you guys know where that is? Maybe we'll find out. So this is our actual book. Happy Easter, Tim. We've got a little... Uh, Oh, sorry to hear that, Kevin. I'm sorry that she's not with you, but thank you for joining. Luckily, all of these episodes are saved right here on the page, so you guys can always go back and listen to the episodes. So you can listen with Cheyenne um, next week. So inside, we have our tiger stripe. How this book was made based on a true story. Mac Barnett and Adam Rex. At first, this book wasn't a book. It was an idea. Ideas can come at funny times. When I had the idea for this book, 
I went to a quiet place and I wrote. I wrote from early in the morning until late at night. It was very hard work. Soon, I had a bunch of words on paper. Those words were the first draft. Boy, ideas can come at a funny time, all right. When you're arm wrestling a tiger? Hmm. The first draft of this book was not so good. Neither was the second draft, or the third draft, or the twelfth. But writing lots of drafts is a very useful part of the writing process. For instance, when the tiger came back for revenge because I beat him in arm wrestling, I burned these drafts and scared him away. Now remember, this is based on a true story. At least that's what the book says. I worked and I worked and with the 20 first drafts, I was done. So I sent my words to my editor in New York City. An editor tells you what parts of your story are good and what parts you need to fix. She is like a teacher, only she works in a skyscraper and is always eating fancy lunches. My editor called me and said, I love this. This is perfect. Now here are all the things that I have to change. And she sent the story back to me. I took some of her advice and I ignored some of her advice. And then I sent the story back to her. She sent the story right back and asked me why I had ignored some of her advice. And I said, I didn't think they were good ideas. And she said, I thought they were great ideas. And I said, well, let's agree to disagree. And she said, let's agree with me. And I said, you're not the boss of me. And it went back and forth and back and forth. Until most of the United States of America was crossed out. Many Americans were not happy about this. I will say, they missed Maine. <laughs> if you could see, this is where Maine is located, up here, way up here. This is where I live. We completely got missed, so did Florida. Mickey Mouse got missed too. Eventually, my editor loved all my words, and I loved all my words. Even the tiger, who I had returned, who had returned with a posse, loved all my words. I was finished with writing. But this book was still not a book. The words needed pictures. So my editor in New York sent them to an illustrator in Arizona. It took the illustrator a very long time to draw all the pictures for this book. I don't know what he was doing that whole time, but he must have been working very hard. He looks like he's working pretty hard. I sat around and waited. Finally, the illustrator sent all his work to New York and his art and my text sat in a skyscraper waiting to be printed. Look how long he sat around. He sat around so long he grew a beard. Remember, this is a true story, or so the book says. Now, the fastest way to get this book to bookstores and libraries 
would be to print it nearby in New York or Philadelphia or even Miami. But this book was printed in, do you remember that picture I showed you on the back of the cover? Malaysia. So this, all these red spots here, is Malaysia. That's where the book was printed. Maybe that's where the lion lives. Malaysia, where contraptions called printing presses rumble and steam. A lady put the words and the art into one side of the machine and out the other, out the other end came this book. And then another book, and then another, and another, thousands and thousands of books. This book was buried below a great pile, so tall you could see it from space. Astronauts looked down at Earth that day and saw a stack of books and the Great Wall of China right next to each other. They smiled, then floated around a bunch while eating astronaut ice cream. Oh, I love astronaut ice cream. You guys ever had astronaut? I love the ice cream sandwiches. They're so yummy. And that's exactly what that astronaut is eating. She's eating ice cream sandwiches, astronaut ice cream sandwiches. Oh goodness, I love them. But that's science. This is literature. And at last, this book was ready to be read. It needed to get to the United States as fast as it could. Of course, the fastest way would be to put them on a jet, but this book got put on a boat. A slow boat took all the books across the sea. The journey was dull until the pirates arrived. Shiver me timbers. Those don't look like nice pirates. Look at that flag. Uh-oh. Those look like grumpy pirates. What do you think? I'm thinking they're grumpy pirates. Yes, Tim, I agree with you. Astronaut ice cream is wonderful. The pirates swarmed the boat and quickly overran it. They tied up the crew and stole the captain's keys. The lead buccaneer kicked open the hatch to the ship's hold. The pirates held their breath and imagined their treasures. There was no gold inside, just books. Pirates don't read, so they sailed away. Ah, uh, Polly wants some treasure. Uh, Polly doesn't want books. Uh. When this book came into harbor, it was put on a truck. The truck driver put the truck into gear and drove down the highway. He braked hard for a tiger crossing the road and this book fell out of the back. And an eagle swooped down and grabbed this book for her babies. To eat, not to read. Eagles don't read books either, so you know. She ripped out a corner, but her chicks didn't like it. They pushed this book out of their nest. This book briefly served as a roof for a toad until it was picked up by a dog that brought it back to his owner, who lost it that night in a bad hand of poker. To a truck driver whose load was one book short. He made his delivery to a woman who put it on a shelf next to many other books. This book waited and I waited. Look, the book even grew a beard. Boy, I'm glad they shaved the beard off the book. That would have been hard to read the book if there was a beard coming out of it. And the tiger waited and his posse waited 
and the pirates and the astronauts and the editor waited and the illustrator and the old lady and her dog waited and the truck driver and the angry ink splattered Americans and the family of eagles and the people in Malaysia, they waited. We all waited here in this book, which was practically bursting, just waiting for someone to open it because a book can have words and pictures and paper and tigers, but a book still isn't a book. Not really until it has a reader. And then we came along. You see everybody? Look at all those people waiting. All waiting for us to open the book to read. Wow, boy, I'm glad that we read this tonight. Wouldn't want those people waiting any longer, would you? And we read this book through to the very last page, which was how this book was made. The end. There you go, guys. How This Book Was Made by Mac Barnett, with illustrations by Adam Rex, who I do believe did a little bit more work than how this book says that happened. I don't think he sat around in bed all day because the artwork was pretty good. So I think he did a little bit more work than he gets credit for. All right, guys, thank you so much. I would tell you what is on the list for next week. However, I'm not 100% sure. I think I know. But I have asked my friends over at the Briar Patch Books down in downtown Bangor to set aside some books for me. I have some ideas. I've been saving some things that I see around um, in my mind and in my phone, and I've sent those over to Briar Patch in hopes of getting those books to read for next month. Um, so next week will be a surprise. <sighs> Gotta love surprises. So you'll just have to tune in or just have to follow, uh, Actress Fun. Tim, thank you. Yes, these are my, <laughs> I didn't have bunny ears and my head felt like it needed something. So I'm wearing my rose gold mini ears. I may have to wear these more often. I like them a lot. I think they're cute. My rose gold mini ears with my my pink Easter jacket. And I put a little ribbon around my neck because I felt like it looked Eastery. You do what you can on short notice, right? Thank you, Serena. I appreciate it. I love them too. All right, guys. You all have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining me. If you didn't get a chance to listen to the story from the very beginning, uh, as soon as I click bye-bye, you guys can always go back to my site, Actress Fun, here on Facebook, and all of them are there. In fact, I think if you click on videos, there is actually a whole playlist of every single Storytime Sunday we've done. And we've been doing this since September or October of 2018, so we've got quite a few in there. So if you want something for you and your kids to do one night or you need some help settling them down, feel free to go back, share it with your friends, share it with your family, and uh, enjoy past Storytime Sundays. And in the meantime, stay creative, keep having fun, and make sure to visit your local bookstores. Keep them in business because without them, life would just not be as fun. Okay, guys, thank you so much. I will see you next Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time for Storytime Sunday. In the meantime, have a good week. Happy Easter. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.